Hi, I'm Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company, and I am here today with Lisa Hirsch from the Kansas City Modern Quilt Guild. Welcome, Lisa. Thanks for having me, Jenny. It's really fun. So uh, we have, in January, came out with this mod block, and we actually ran a, cont a contest at the uh, Kansas City Quilt Guild, the Modern Quilt Guild. Yes. And what happened? Well, I entered it with several other people, and in September, you guys gave me a call and I was the winner for the contest. And she won for the contest. Now Mod Block is made up of a lot of designers that um, we just had them go look at our tutorials and see if they could put a modern spin on it. And Lisa put a modern spin on our, a modern spin on our half hexi quilt. And I wanna show you that right here because it is really cool. So what do you call this, Lisa? Um, it's called the Hexi Gems and I used a half a charm pack and a full layer cake um, to highlight some of the modern attributes of negative space and asymmetry. asymmetry. Oh, it's very, very fun. I was just really intrigued by those little gems, by how she used the hexes to make the little flowers. And so we decided, you know, the half hexy was her inspiration. Uh, our inspira she was our inspiration for this quilt. And so we want to show you today how to make the hexy gems. So to make this quilt, what you're going to need is two packets of five inch squares. We've used Lucky by Lotte Jansdotter for Wyndham Fabrics. And you're also going to need a packet of background squares. And we've used the Bella Solid White for all of our uh, background squares. And so basically, Lisa, I'm going to have you show me how to do this. Sure. And uh, show you how, how you put it together because you obviously might have some tips and tricks for us. Sure. <laughs> Um, so the first thing is you need to get these ready to go on your um, on your squares on your square, and so you can either use some of the um, fusible um, sheet of heat and bond kind right. of product. Right, and, and the heat and bond. If you do use heat and bond, you're going to need two and a half yards of that. Okay, and if you don't have that, then a glue stick will work as long as it sure, washes just, off. Just something to hold it yeah. on there. You're also going to need a half hexi ruler like this. Mm -hmm. And so show me how you other normal sewing things well, as well. Well, yeah, just the normal know. stuff. <laughs> just <laughs> So, um, because we cut this out from some yardage, you'd have that pinking around it on a normal charm pack. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to show you a, a trick of how to not have that in your finished product. Very cool. So we're going to first um, lay our fabric on top of our heat and bond, get our iron going, and you probably want to make sure that you can carefully work your iron around it so you don't get that awesome sticky stuff on your face plate of yeah, your iron. We don't, we don't like the sticky stuff on the no nope. on the face plate. Give that a little zhuzh right there. Oh, a zhuzh. Yeah, why not? I like that. And then I'm going to come over here and... I got a whole new word, a zhuzh. zhuzh. I'm always making up words. I, I, <laughs> I like that. I do too. All right. So, um, now, depending on what you want to do... Did you trim this out? I'm assuming, no? I, I like to cut it in half and then come back and get the angles. Oh, okay. So let me just trim this off of here so we'll clean this up a mm -hmm. little bit. So depending on, I mean, as long as it gets cut into a, hexa, a hexagon or a half hexy, it, it doesn't really do matter, it. right? Well, does it? Because, um, well, because of the little pink edges. Yes, the pink edge. Okay. So, I like so to, now I have it in half. Mm -hmm. And so really we'd have, our pink, so can see we'd have our pink edges out here. So I'm going to put the long edge of the half hexi matching with the pinked edge so that will um, get hidden in the seam allowance. So I'll turn that. So because that this is, these it. are all going to be ironed on square, on top. Yes, ma'am. Okay. They're going to just be um, satin stitched or whatever you like to do. I like your, that. Do you um, like the satin stitch? I, you know, I like a good satin stitch or I like a good blanket stitch. It kind of depends on what I'm doing, yeah. um, is it more about um, how it's being attached and who's going to use it right. versus is it going to be more of like a showy kind of thing. But I kind of make all my quilts for uh, people to use and love and wash a bajillion times. Yeah, me and too. So, I'm pretty much a utilitarian oh, yeah. quilter. So now we've got that cut out. Always close your rotary cutter. All right. So now basically we have to make two different sets of blocks yeah. for this quilt. Yeah. So um, let me get some solid squares out here. Down here on the bottom, I think. Mm -hmm. All right, so here's our solids, and we've got a few more of these hexes cut out over here, ready to go. Now, our first block is just gonna have two squares on it, yes. correct? Yep, and so um, you're gonna just take two. And we can actually, we probably, oh, well, let's do it right here so they can see it, and then we'll carefully move it to the okay. ironing board. 
So I'm going to just take two of uh, contrasting fabric patterns, uh, maybe you like a light and a dark, maybe you like a stripe these. and a print, whatever you um, like the best is good. Um, we just use little strips on this one instead of using the whole sheet. Well, yeah, it's, this is, that's great for scraps. Yeah. It's just got to yeah. hang on long enough to do it. So what I do is you're working towards meeting this um, corner from the short end of your half hexi. Okay. And it's going to need to um, touch the other one. So right now they're a little off kilter. And so you're just going to um, move it on down. It's about an inch and a quarter, depending on um, how the manufacturer has got your five inch charm pack. And so um, they just kind of touch just ever so That's in the perfect. middle. And so then we iron those off. Iron those suckers down and you're ready to go to your machine. So with that transference, we'll just kind of get it back into place. I just loved how this came together. This was like, it's, you know, it's one so of those fast. things. So fast. Well, and you do, you do so many of these things and oh, somebody yeah. just tweaks it and does something different and it's like a whole new something. And it's just like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. Yeah. And so the neat thing is, um, like, because my mom, she's a huge inspiration in all of the creative things that I do. And sometimes you've got to, like, start with a box mix and then put a little spin on it, <laughs> put a little go. lemon zest in it, and it's a whole new thing. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to stitch around these mm -hmm. because uh, we want them to hold on. Yep. And you can use, like you said, the satin stitch. We're going to use a little blanket stitch, and we're just going to stitch around these, and you'll be able to see this right here as I'm coming around the mountain and and I don't think you have to worry too much about the corner um, on the long edge because it does get stuck into that seam allowance I was really picky about mine but it wasn't really but nobody saw it no one saw it <laughs> Spend your time love, on other things, right? I love how we do that, though. We, we're like, oh my gosh, you know. Well, and I got to pivot. <laughs> no, just get around it. And it's like, oh, nobody even saw that. It was right. in the seam. Yep. And so if you're really particular, you could match your thread to each one. But in the end, you got to just decide how much time do you want to put yeah, into I this. Would, I would never do that. Well, I, I was a little special when I did that on did the, you really? the gray so one. You, you 11 different colors of thread. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that's Well, you know, and that's really, what, the cool thing about that is that everybody's different. Yeah. You know, everybody's going to oh, yeah. do something a little bit differently and it's going to work. So the second time I made it, I didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, all right, I admit, true confessions. Nope, nope get done. Yeah. All right, so we are actually going to make 20 of these. You're going to make 20 of those. And now we have to make the other set. Yep. Which is the same thing but on both corners, correct? Yep, I'm going to move it over here so that it's a little okay. bit easier. Let me see these things here so we can make um, sure we can see it all. Move it around. And so um, when I'm looking at which ones to pick, I do kind of want a little bit of everything. Um, and since I have that blue and the polka dot over here, it's all right. I'm not going to put them next to each other in that right. one. So then you have a little bit more variety. Um, sometimes you can control that planned chaos a little bit. Yeah, I, I love that word, planned chaos. That's great. Or, you know. I call it controlled scrappy. Controlled scrappy. Or, or here's a, a plain one, orange. Do you want another? I kind of, well. You want a flower so it's different? Well, I got a flower. It doesn't matter. So we'll glue it down, stick it down, and then it, when you tumble them around, uh, we'll just make sure they match up. And again, when you cut your your tumbler, or your not your tumblers, your half hexes, you want to make sure that if you have a pink edge on yours, it that goes, the pink edge is on the bottom, mm -hmm, on that so long that edge. it'll go into the seam because all the rest of it we top stitch down, and you don't want to have that little pink edge, you know, on your line like that. Mm -hmm. So that's probably, I, I would say that's probably one of the main tips. Oh yeah, you know. oh yeah. And you can get rid of that. So, there, there we, we go. go. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing and we're going to stitch all the way around these just like we did on here. So once you get your blocks done, we're going to have 20 that have twos and 20 that have fours. We are ready to lay them out. Yep. And this is actually a standard layout because there are 42 blocks in the, um, in the, in the layer cake. You're going to get six, six blocks across by seven rows down. And so we have four here and we have four because... Yes, we're going to put a solid square at the, on, on each side. Yep. So you can see what we've done with this top row. This top row is all just the twos. And we've just laid them right sides together. And Lisa, you, you have a little uh, trick for keeping these together. Yep, all you need is probably two pins. I, 
if you get to be a fancy expert, you don't need one at all, <laughs> but you would just pin it right where those half hexes start and stop to kind of keep that. Well, you do want to um, make sure those together. are lined up. Yeah. yeah, you do want to make sure those yeah. are lined up. So that's a good, that's a good tip. The white areas, they're um, kind of uh, that secondary focus. And so it doesn't matter so much if they're a little off. Right. I'd rather cheat that area than to have that area. Oh gosh, off. yeah. So, so this is our actually our first row. So after the first row, then what happens? Then um, I like to kind of figure out the fours a little bit easier because you know those are big. And then I like, all right, you now I know what needs to come into here. You start making your gems. Yep. And so then you can go like that. And oh, then that's so cool. Oops, I need you to put that one over there. Oh, I will. It's a four. All right, here we go. And then on the Wait. the first column and the last column, you'll always use a two um, block. So then you can have that kind of resting place for your eye. If you wanted to have a half of uh, a hexi gem, you could do that too. So then on this one over here, I'm going to yep. match these up. And then out here, I'm going to have a two. Yep. That is very cool. So then that really just leads you into the next row, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Because really what you're making is these little gems. Yep. So you'll go ahead and do six rows of these. Again, there's seven blocks across and six down. Match your gems and put them together. So the main tips on this are we're going to use pins right here mm -hmm. when we put them together. Yep. We're going to make sure that our pinked edge. Your pinked edge is the long edge of your fabric. On the bottom that's going to go in the seam. Mm -hmm. And, and then using some kind of a, either a glue stick or your heat and bond will save you from any slippage. Slippage, and if you put pins in there, it kind of gets a little cumbersome. So I just love the way this flower went together. I love, you know, it's such a cute block. It's just, you know, I love, I just love what you did with it, bringing them together. And you even made a little pillow out of it, didn't you? Oh, sure. You? Um, so sometimes you need those little fast, quick gifts. Um, and so it's really simple. It well, and sometimes before. you really want to see what it's just going to look like. Oh, yeah. Test it out, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so isn't this darling? I think this is a really cute idea. I, and sometimes you just have that one block that you, you need bet. something for. And you this bet. is a great idea for that as well. So Lisa's quilt you can actually find in Mod Block. It's right here. It's called Hexi Gems right here in our Mod Block. And we're calling ours Hexi Gems garden flower garden flower garden the hexi gems flower garden it's been so great having you here today, oh thanks Lisa. so much for having me it's been really fun so we hope you enjoyed this tutorial from the missouri star quilt company